This video is sponsored by no one. Make sure to use my code for no one in the video description below to get 20% off your next adventure with no one. One of the most important parts of any theoretical computer science class is be able to compare different models against each other. And one of the models that are often talked about in theoretical computer science classes are pushdown automata and Turing machines. So a pushdown automaton essentially is just a state machine where we have a bunch of states like this. And each one of these transitions between the states can do one of three things. So they can read a particular thing. So they're allowed to read something and they're allowed to push or pop from a stack. So the PDA has the stack that is gonna grow and shrink depending on what the transitions are gonna do. So one of the really annoying things about PDAs is that let's suppose that we have a completely empty stack like this one. And let's say that we're in some state right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna read something. It doesn't matter what it is. But let's say that we wanna pop some particular character X. And every transition coming out of this thing is going to have that particular behavior that reads something and then pops some other character. Maybe we have multiple that do the same pop. So maybe we have a pop X here and a pop X here. Maybe we have a third one over here. Namely, we have a state that has a pop for every single transition coming out of it. And then therefore, if we have an empty stack, that means that we can't actually do anything in this state, which is really annoying, because then we would be popping an empty stack, which is not allowed. So one thing that is usually done in PDA creation is, at the very start, we're going to not pop anything, so pop nothing. I'm not writing this formally, just to get the point across. But here, I'm gonna push on some particular stack character. I'm gonna call it dollar sign. It doesn't matter exactly what the character is, but the main purpose of this is, that if we put this on right at the very beginning, so this is the start state, then that means that at the very beginning, we're gonna push on this dollar sign character onto the stack. One of the things that's nice about this is that it allows easy detection of when the stack is quote unquote empty. And by empty, I mean of the stuff that's above that particular uh, bottom of stack character. So then maybe if we do a bunch of pushes here, and then we do a bunch of pops here, then one thing that we can determine is we can try to pop the dollar sign right there. Then that means that if we can execute this transition, then the number of pushes matches the number of pops, which is really nice. But the annoying thing is that if we have this behavior at the very beginning of the PDA and we always want to do it, then what's the point of having this right here? Why don't we just bake into the model itself to say the stack always starts with this stack character on there instead of us having to put it on there in the first place. And the similar thing is with Turing machines. So Turing machines, remember, have this particular tape. And the, again, there are also a state-based machines. And the behavior here is slightly different where you have some characters written on this tape with some blank characters, although that's not important here. And we have some tape head that is looking at some symbols. So each of these transitions is gonna read some particular character. It's gonna write a particular character and it's gonna move in some direction uh, D, I'm gonna call it D here. So a common operation for Turing machines to do is to be able to move all the way to the right at the end and move all the way left. So it may be to mark the first occurrence of some character going left. But the problem is that, that there's this left hand end right here. And then if we try to move left, we're gonna smash into the left hand end. And depending on the model that's actually being done, it could be that the machine just completely stops and crashes at that point. Another thing is that it just stays in this cell, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If we're trying to move left and we just stay here, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So one thing that is usually done, kind of like the PDAs, is that we shift the input to the right and put a dollar sign right here. So let's say I, I want to move this over, then this character was an A, I'm going to put a dollar sign there. I remember that there was an A here, so I want an A to go here. So an A goes here, there was a B here, I'm going to put a B here, there was a C here, and then I just keep going along in this way at the very start. And so the Turing machines that are usually made at the beginning, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but effectively what they have is that they have this component right here, which is namely for shifting the input uh, right one position. 
and then the real logic of the machine will start. And if we're just doing that every single time, because it's just so useful to have this start character right here, why don't we just bake into the model that the Turing machine's tape has the dollar sign right there? So why don't we just say that the tape starts with this particular dollar sign character? And then that would alleviate this headache of having to put this here every single time, which I totally agree with. There are pros and cons to this. The main advantage is that we don't have to have this piece here and we don't need to have this piece right here if we are going to bake into the model that the start character is there. The main disadvantage is that the model becomes a little bit more complicated because now we have this extra rule of what the machine's behavior actually does. And if we try to carry this to this logical conclusion of why don't we just say we have a built-in transition that does a whole lot of pushes at one time instead of having to do them one at a time because that's useful and that makes the machine run faster. The problem is that the model becomes more complicated. So I want to get your thoughts on whether or not you think that this is a good idea. I think it's a reasonably good idea, but again, I'm just one person. I want to get your thoughts upon this. So hopefully this is interesting. Leave thoughts about PDAs and Turing machines in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy.